All right, welcome everyone to an introduction to artificial intelligence with Python. My name is Brian Yu, and in this class, we'll explore some of the ideas and techniques and algorithms that are at the foundation of artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence covers a wide variety of types of techniques. Anytime you see a computer do something that appears to be intelligent or rational in some way, like recognizing someone's face in a photo, or being able to play a game better than people can, or being able to understand human language when we talk to our phones and they understand what we mean and are able to respond back to us, these are all examples of AI or artificial intelligence. And in this class, we'll explore some of the ideas that make that AI possible. So, we'll begin our conversations with search, the problem of we have an AI, and we would like the AI to be able to search for solutions to some kind of problem, no matter what that problem might be, whether it's trying to get driving directions from point A to point B, or trying to figure out how to play a game, given a tic tac toe game, for example, figuring out what move it ought to make. After that, we'll take a look at knowledge. Ideally, we want our AI to be able to know information, to be able to represent that information, and more importantly, to be able to draw inferences from that information, to be able to use the information it knows and draw additional conclusions. So, we'll talk about how AI can be programmed in order to do just that. Then we'll explore the topic of uncertainty, talking about ideas of what happens if a computer isn't sure about a fact, but maybe is only sure with a certain probability. So, we'll talk about some of the ideas behind probability and how computers can begin to deal with uncertain events in order to be a little bit more intelligent in that sense as well. After that, we'll turn our attention to optimization problems of when the computer is trying to optimize for some sort of goal, especially in a situation where there might be multiple ways that a computer might solve a problem, but we're looking for a better way or potentially the best way, if that's at all possible. Then we'll take a look at machine learning or learning more generally and looking at how, when we have access to data, our computers can be programmed to be quite intelligent by learning from data and learning from experience, being able to perform a task better and better based on greater access to data. So, your email, for example, where your email inbox somehow knows which of your emails are good emails and which of your emails are spam. These are all examples of computers being able to learn from past experiences and past data. We'll take a look too at how computers are able to draw inspiration from human intelligence, looking at the structure of the human brain and how neural networks can be a computer analog to that sort of idea, and how by taking advantage of a certain type of structure of a computer program, we can write neural networks that are able to perform tasks very, very effectively. And then finally, we'll turn our attention to language, not programming languages, but human languages that we speak every day. And taking a look at the challenges that come about as a computer tries to understand natural language and how it is that some of the natural language processing that occurs in modern artificial intelligence can actually work. But today, we'll begin our conversation with search, this problem of trying to figure out what to do when we have some sort of situation that the computer is in, some sort of environment that an agent is in, so to speak. And we would like for that agent to be able to somehow look for a solution to that problem. Now, these problems can come in any number of different types of formats. One example, for instance, might be something like this classic 15 puzzle with the sliding tiles that you might have seen, where you're trying to slide the tiles in order to make sure that all the numbers line up in order. This is an example of what you might call a search problem. The 15 puzzle begins in an initially mixed up, mixed up state, and we need some way of finding moves to make in order to return the puzzle to its solved state. But there are similar problems that you can frame in other ways. Trying to find your way through a maze, for example, is another example of a search problem. You begin in one place, you have some goal of where you're trying to get to, and you need to figure out the correct sequence of actions that will take you from that initial state to the goal. And while this is a little bit abstract, anytime we talk about maze solving in this class, you can translate it to something a little more real world, something like driving directions.